I went vegan as a meat lover. This is what happened by Kook. Kook? It looks like he posts a lot of food related content, recipes, and whatnot. So I am very intrigued by this. Hopefully it's positive. I know it says goodbye meat and it's like sad, but I think it's gonna be a positive one. I don't know. Why am I saying this? Now it's definitely gonna be awful. Oh no. He's just gonna be like farting constantly or something. I was born in the Eastern European country of Romania. Lots of meat. Almost if not all of the dishes contain some form of meat. Cabbage rolls with meat, little meat logs, smoked meat sausages, polenta, top with meat. And it's all pretty delicious, but growing up with that almost ingrains in your brain that meat and animal products in general are almost necessary for a dish to be complete. And for a long time, I felt that. I thought that was true. Taking the leap to have a fully plant-based diet has always seemed like an impossibility for me because I simply didn't know what the heck I would eat. So that is why starting right now, I will switch to a completely plant-based diet for one week. I was hoping it'd be 30 days, but yeah, a week's pretty good. And again, it looks like he cooks a lot. He might even be a chef, like he has a, a background in cooking. So I assume he'll do a better job of making yummy vegan food, right? It's not just gonna be like raw tofu with salt on it. I don't know <laughs> who would do that. <laughs> I started my experiment with not a lot of planning in mind, to be honest. I kind of dug through my fridge to see what I can use to cook something. Most of the time for lunch, I would have a rice bowl with all sorts of toppings on it. But a big part of that is usually the chicken breast that I always use. So I thought, let me just make an easy switch up and use tofu instead of chicken. I determined that this is pretty much the base layer of vegan food. Just eat pretty much the same things, except try to substitute the animal products with vegan counterparts. In the upcoming days, my view of this approach was about to completely change. But at this point, I was still at level one. MSG, don't tell anyone. Hey man, I got a container MSG on my shelf. It's my secret ingredient. So I assume he means he's going to start by just replacing meat with like tofu, right? And then he's going to start making maybe more traditional meals that are already vegan. Just to be clear, it doesn't matter. It's however you want to eat, whatever is appealing to you. I mean, again, he has like a cooking background, so it probably is more appealing to him to learn new techniques or new dishes, right? Whereas I think the average person, we just want to eat what we know. We want it to be quick and to taste reasonably good. We have other things we want to do. I think most of us are not really keen on cooking to begin with. As I went into this week, I was sure of one thing. I don't want anything to do with those fake meats. I'm sorry, I'm not going to eat this vegan sausage and pretend that it's actual sausage. It's just not... It doesn't work for me. If it works for you, I'm happy. But I had this strong feeling that I wanted to highlight the natural beauty and flavor of plants, vegetables, legumes, mushrooms, all that good stuff. We'll see how long that lasts. No, I don't know. Maybe that's what he ends up doing. Um, yeah, I mean, like he said, if that works for you, then fine. Um, it sounds like he eats a lot of meat and really, really likes meat. So I'm not super surprised that he has no interest in those. I'm assuming he's at least tried them and been like, no, that's not. And he might be like, a foodie. I know I've said I hate foodie shit and I, I generally do. I mean, just the idea that like something is bad because it's not the quote unquote real thing is really obnoxious to me because it inevitably leads to, oh, mock meats are inherently bad because they're not real meat, even though they are almost always better for us, better for the environment, certainly better for animals, certainly like who the fuck cares if it's not the real thing. And let's be real, the most delicious foods are like fucking Oreos. They're heavily processed, hyper palatable foods that are made to be addicting. We can't stop eating eating them. <laughs> That's the most delicious shit. Usually I would for sure have some meat here, but this time it's this. It kind of looks chickeny, but it's not. It's, it's tofu, which is fine. I shouldn't try to imitate meat. Why? If you want to, who cares? So I'm really wondering now if this, is this like a stance he's taken? Again, I was assuming that he's, he's tried the mock meats and didn't like them, but maybe he hasn't. Maybe he just really has like a, a moral issue with the existence of them, which is, it's very weird to me, but I don't know. It's me vegan, bro. What, all day? Every, all the time. All the time. I give that shit fucking two days. 
Cool days? Yeah. Okay. Challenge accepted. I like his carrot pants. Another issue I encountered in the first day is that I rely on a lot of animal products for snacking. For me, healthy snacking always revolved around some sort of dairy product like yogurt. Please don't judge me for not slicing the banana. That is such like a dude thing. Is it not just squeezing the banana into the bowl because you can't be bothered to slice it up? Soy yogurt then. Yeah, it's not entirely the same. It's good, but it's not the same. So right away, I feel like I need a change in my mentality. I needed my perspective to be opened in a way. This is Julius Fiedler, better known online as Herman. He makes awesome plant-based cooking videos. And let's be real, he has like Barbie doll perfect hair. Like, look at that hair. How do you even do that? It's the most beautiful hair I've ever seen. I think we're also focused on, we love certain foods and we have this nostalgia around food. And now we need to recreate that plant-based. And that makes way for like an industry-led, um, you know, storm of fake products that are like bombarding our shelves. It's, I think it's the wrong approach. I think there's so much, so much amazing food out there all around the world that is plant-based, that happens to be plant-based. I'm always really hopeful that people sort of shake off the stereotype of what vegan food is like. There's two ways, yeah? Either people say, oh, what do you eat when you're on a vegan plant, uh, on a vegan diet, you eat lettuce, leaves and broccoli. The other one is you're forcefully trying to use fake meats to replace actual meat. And I think there's, you know, there's a natural way as well, but nobody really talks about it. I really resonated to pretty much- Okay, I hope this isn't like the whole video. I'm getting bummed now. I jinxed it. No one talks about the natural way? Are you kidding me? <laughs> How often do I have to defend vegans who eat processed stuff? right? Like it's, it's ridiculous the amount of times we hear, oh, those are just transition foods. And then you need to get off of those in order to be like a real vegan is the implication or to be at all healthy. Like you can't eat any of them. You know, I, I don't know. That's, that's, what? Lots of vegans promote a whole food plant-based diet with very little to no processed meats and cheeses and all of that stuff. I have to go to the grocery store because I realized that so many of the foods that I usually eat are not vegan. Even the ones I didn't consider before. Like there's obvious ones, you know? Look at this. Yogurt, not vegan. Protein pudding, not vegan. Eggs, obviously not vegan. Vegan Philadelphia though. That's vegan. Quark, not vegan. Quark? What's that? Beans are vegan, I hope. And when it's just me and a can of beans, it's just pure happiness. But sometimes I forget about the truly important things in life, such as oh. calmly eating. Ad read. Oh my God, that sweater though, adorable. He's eaten just a can of beans and he's happy. Was that a joke? Am I being silly? Was that a joke? That didn't seem like a joke. If you can just open a can of beans and eat them. Why are you not vegan, sir? That is like level 12 vegan shit. I've been vegan for 15 years. I haven't reached that status. I can't open a can, ugh, ugh. The bean juice, like did you even rinse them? Are you just eating them in the, in the canned bean juice? Oh no, that's hardcore. What's it like going to the grocery store with just a tiny, tiny little, little basket cart thing and you can get everything you need. The big size carts here are barely enough to fit all of our food for the week. Me and partner and our five little kids, it's like sometimes, oh man, I gotta make the little one walk so I can use the little the little seat part, you know, to put stuff in. We couldn't have a fourth kid if we wanted to because like, how would I go shopping? I can't pull two carts. Get a rope, attach them together. I'm of the firm belief that tempeh is better than tofu. So because I have some leftover rice from yesterday, I'll just make a tempeh fried rice, why not? The reason I like tempeh much more is mainly because of the texture, but also the flavor is like so much more funky and complex to me. I wanna like it, it looks so good. Tempeh fried rice that sounds so delicious, but it just, it's not. That's not true, sometimes it's good and I need to get partner to make more because he made some last year. Like we made some at home, we got some starter and it was really, really good. I made some delicious meatballs. I used Issa's recipe from Issa Does It. Oh, delicious, so good. Also, there's a place here called DC Veg, DC Vegetarian. They're all vegan now. They have been for a few years, I think. They make tempeh, or no, they don't make it. They get it from somewhere around here. I can't remember where. Really, really good. It doesn't have that nasty, bitter thing that most tempeh has. So I do like tempeh sometimes. I'm very happy with this. I have an amazing nutritious fried rice. I have a vegan protein bar. <laughs> oh, 
that Bear Bells? Looks like the peanut butter <laughs> plant-based Bear Bells bar, <laughs> which they don't have at Trader Joe's. They only have the hazelnut, which like, fine, that's the best one anyway. But also they're $2.29. Oh, so, that's, that's insane. That's so expensive. So things were going pretty great. Hmm. Although I kind of realized that in order to have this approach to plant-based food, that's going to require like constant effort. Now, my job is basically cooking and making these videos, and I still had a pretty rough time having to spend that long in the kitchen every single day, two or more times a day, you know? Wait, does he not eat leftovers? I mean, like, I generally don't eat leftovers because I have issues, and <laughs> it's I just, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what's wrong with me. Yeah, you definitely don't have to cook two to three times a day to be vegan. That's that's crazy. Even if you're doing like a whole food natural approach, you definitely don't have to do that. There's lots of stuff you can make ahead. I'm sure there are many ways to do this efficiently and recipes I'm not even aware of, but I found that more often than not to make veggies very exciting, you need to spend time on them. Isn't that the same for any food though? Even if you're eating meat, I mean, in order to make food exciting, yeah, you're probably going to have to spend more time on it and you're going to have to make different things more often, which is just inherently going to be more time consuming, right? But uh, who eats like that? If you have a private chef, maybe, but like uh, most people don't eat like that, right? We have just a few staples. They've actually done studies on this, I think, and people generally eat like the same, was it like 10 things or something all the time with little variation? I hate cooking. I don't like a lot. I mean, he likes a lot more different foods than I do. That's why it's so funny that like I'm vegan and he's the one eating beans out of a can. <laughs> but maybe that's the issue. He loves food, right? He loves all food. I hate most food, including most plants. I hate most vegan foods and leftovers. Again, no. And yet I make it work and I don't spend a lot of time on cooking. I've just been doing this so long. I know what I like. And even with new recipes, I can typically look at something and go, oh no, no, that's not for me. And obviously I have a family, so I'm cooking for my family too. And if you also have a family, people you cook for, you learn really fast that you come up with like 10 to 20 different things that you just kind of make on rotation, right? Things that are both easy and that everyone likes. And sure, you may change it up here and there and everyone hates it. And that's great. That's so fun. Actually, I made something the other night and everyone liked it. What was it? Oh, I did some tofu. I kind of did what he did in the pan, but I did it in the oven. It was really simple. I think it just had like garlic, powder and onion powder. I had some paprika. Everyone in this house loves paprika. So I put that on there and like salt and pepper and put it in the oven and everyone loved it. Even my middle child, my five-year-old who generally, if they want tofu, they just want tofu like dipped in soy sauce. That's it. Not, not fried, not crisped up, nothing. Just like tofu out of the fridge <laughs> with soy sauce. That's that's what they want. And not like a soy sauce, like dip, like soy sauce and rice vinegar, maybe a little bit of sugar or anything. No, no, no. Just soy sauce. Point is to make veggies very exciting. You need to spend time on them. That's a really high expectation to have no matter what you're eating, you know, just for cooking in general, either for yourself or for your family to expect food to be exciting. You should expect to put in a lot of work for that to happen. It's 1.30 a.m. and I just want to give a quick update on my vegan diet. My farts, they stank. Welcome to vegan time day three. Is that it? Just the little quick farts and they stink? That's it? I'm surprised, honestly. <laughs> Thought it was going to be all about the farts. Let's see what came in this package. I want to get it here. What's in there? Oh my god, you could have stabbed that in pro- Oh, that would have been a mess. So just to be clear, me buying this protein powder is out of pure convenience. <laughs> I know it's not in the spirit that I was talking about, like, you know, it's highly processed, kind of removed from nature, but it just saves me so much hassle in some situations, mm. and I think I have to be realistic here rather than chase some perfect, really unattainable lifestyle. Message 100%, but oh my god, and he's chewing it. Oh, I'm gonna throw up. I'm a baby when it comes to certain things and food, but to me, just mixing up with a spoon protein powder and milk and drinking it but yes convenience realistic yes i had protein powder just this morning in my smoothie so like yeah i get it i woke up at my friend's place and i was like guys let me make you some vegan pancakes everyone will get breakfast from me and spoiler alert these were the worst freaking pancakes i've ever made in my life look that's that's not a pancake at that moment 
did he just use pr- protein powder and like not enough liquid? And I don't know. I don't know. I've made protein pancakes and they were better than that. I mean, look, they're not pancakes in terms of that lovely, like fluffy thing. You know, it's like when people do not keto, but the kind of paleo pancake thing where it's just eggs and Greek yogurt or something, something awful like that. Like, no, no. I know I said who cares if it's not a real pancake or not, but like, really, that's, that's not a pancake. So that night I made something I was actually really proud of. In Romania, we grew up eating this dish that directly translates to rubbed beans. <laughs> what the heck? Which sounds awful, but it's delicious. You know, hummus, even though it's delicious, it's not the only legume-based dip that you can make. Other legume dips need some shine. So I decided to take a little page out of my own culture and make this white bean spread. It's garlicky, lemony, and a little smoky. And I didn't just stop there. I wanted to make it like a little piece of art, you know? So I roasted some carrots, I cooked some non-Romanian shiitake mushrooms, also caramelized some onions to craft this beautiful plate. Or maybe it's not beautiful, maybe it looks cringe, but the plate represented me in that moment, so at least I was happy about that. Aw, he's so sweet. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, I wouldn't eat it. It's got mushrooms, ew. A lot of dishes just happen to be vegan. They're not born as a result of some replacement, and they don't even really need the label of vegan. Mapo tofu is a Chinese dish from the Sichuan region that plays around with flavors that are very new and interesting for my Eastern European palate. This dish comes alive within a spicy sauce that has fermented bean paste as a base, and it notably uses these Sichuan peppercorns, which have this trippy, like, numbing effect in your mouth. I had Sichuan mapa tofu, ma- mapa, I don't know, my partner can say it. I had it for the first time a few years back. I, actually, soon after we moved to Portland, my partner was like, yeah, you gotta try it. the Sichuan. It's it's really cool. And it's really yummy. And I was like, uh, try new things. I don't do that. It's really good. It's kind of unsettling because it really is its own thing. Like it does do this tiny bit of of numbing. Your tongue isn't like numb or anything. It's not like you just went to the dentist. It's nothing like that. It's just a slight weird kind of tingly thing. And the flavor is unlike anything else, honestly. It is so unique and just really almost like umami kind of thing. It's also a really good spicy dish to introduce to kids, I think, if you want them to um, kind of improve their palate a little get, bit. If you've got like typical white American kids who can't even eat garlic, <laughs> mapa tofu is really good for that, I think, because it is, it's like slightly spicy, but not really. It's not like a painful sort of uh, spicy. And uh, yeah, it's soft enough even for younger kids, right? Because the tofu is still soft. So good. Although honestly, I would prefer the tofu to be like crisped up a little bit just being honest. The sauce sometimes does contain meat, but it's often replaced with mushrooms, which is what I did here. But from my personal perception, having had the meat version of this dish, that's not what this dish is about. The star of the show for me is this rich, spicy, fermented sauce, and the way it's being delivered by silky, soft pockets of mild tofu. And that contrast is what makes me so excited about it. And when you eat this, you don't feel like anything is lacking. Aw, that was... It's beautiful. Really well said. Later that day for dinner, my girlfriend and I wanted a bit of a challenge and tried making this amazing <laughs> recipe by chef Yotam Otolengi. It's like the perfect amount of effort to feel like you're kind of working on a project together, but it's definitely not so complicated that you want to give up and it's scary. But it's just shallots? Like that's it? Where's the protein though? <laughs> you. No, 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 not for me. I do love this whole garlic stew. It's a fat-free vegan recipe. I know me, fat-free, what? It's really, really good. You use a whole uh, bulb of garlic, not a whole clove, a whole bulb, so 20 cloves, whatever it is, and you leave them whole and you cook it for quite a while and they get really like sweet and oh my God, it's just so yummy. But that has protein, right? It's not just uh, garlic, it's a white bean stew. So it's got protein from that. There's also carrots in it. It's really, really simple. It's so good. Oh, I need to make that again. That's something I'll eat leftovers of. Generally soup, I will eat leftovers of. But that's about it. All right. Now we've got like a chickpea curry. I was waiting for something like that, right? You're going to do like a a chickpea curry, you know? I'm definitely not the guy who's like advocating for a return to the good old days or anything like that. But in some way, I would love to see a future where we have more respect for our food and especially towards animal products we may consume. 
think that's what it's all about, respect. Because in the moment you realize, you know, there's a life involved, um, even if you continue eating it, if you respect that, you're never going to eat it in the same quantity. Maybe. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, source. I would hope that's true. I mean, you would think that's true, right? If, if the person really acknowledges what they're eating. But like too often when we hear respect with animal products, it's this belief that like the animal can know what you're doing and there's some like spiritual element there, which is ridiculous. But if we mean respect in the sense that you understand and acknowledge these animals as sentient beings and you understand the process involved in taking their eggs and their meat, like you're killing creatures just so you can have meat, then yeah, I mean, hopefully people would eat less if they continue to still eat that food. Although, you know, people are people and we can just ignore things. Even things that we know we can forget because it's easier, so. This is day seven, my last day of being fully vegan and I feel pretty good. So what's next for me? Am I gonna continue to be vegan? Am I gonna go back to my old ways? So I'm not gonna be fully vegan for now. But if anything, this experience has definitely shown me that my view of what I can eat is pretty limited. And there's a whole world out there of different dishes that don't rely on animal products that I like. And slowly and slowly, I do want to eat mostly plants. This has been a very good experience for me. I definitely, okay, let me think what changed. I definitely fart more. I don't know if whatever I did benefited my digestion, but it's for sure more active. <laughs> Okay, I didn't jinx it. That was an overall, I think, really lovely, positive video. He is just adorable and seems really genuine and open to new things, which is fantastic. I mean, I think that's a lot of going vegan. Fear of change is more involved in people's disdain for veganism than they would like to admit. And it shows that there are so many different ways to be vegan and to be vegan healthfully, right? I'm not just talking about like really extreme like keto vegan or something, which you can do. I'm not sure if that's the healthiest thing to do, but certainly if someone's gonna do keto, I would rather them do it in a vegan way than a fucking not vegan way. But even less extreme, you know, you can do like the way I do it, which is having mock meats a lot, pretty much every day, not every meal certainly, but usually for dinner, I don't know, Usually, yeah, I'd say 60% of the time we're having some sort of mock meat, some tenders, vegan sausage or grounds in like a pasta sauce, you know, type thing with dinner. Or you can totally avoid those things. And like either way, you can do it healthfully, right? As long as you're like not eating too many calories, you're making sure you're meeting nutrient needs, you're taking your B12, eating your fruits and vegetables. So yeah, that's like my new favorite video. Just the way it was edited too, it was really fun and engaging. It was like 20 minutes long and I felt like that took five minutes, even though I was stopping and talking, like that went by so fast. So uh, yeah, that was fantastic. It's nice for me too, just personally, it's nice for me to see that kind of stuff because you know, it can be so easy to get sucked into like the Sean Baker time stuff and the, who's that other guy, that Australian guy? And it can just, even though I'm always saying like, most people don't feel this way about animals or about veganism, it can, without you really knowing, start to color your view and your kind of understanding of, of people. And it can start to feel like it's us versus them, right? Even though I, I like to think I am not that type of person, like everyone I think can become that type of person, right? You can get sucked into that depending on the type of uh, media and, you know, content that you're consuming. And yeah, it can just become really easy to, I don't know, think everyone hates vegans or something. <laughs> it's just, it's just not true. I think a lot more people are open, you know, probably not to veganism, but to eating less animal products, certainly. Anyway, I would love to know your thoughts and thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. You can support the channel at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. Thank you so much to my patrons who do support the channel as well as my members here on YouTube. And I do post exclusive videos, two exclusive videos there a month for tier two members and patrons. The second of which is a controversial video. I do you know, thoughts on some controversial topic that I come up with for the month. So that's fun. Anyway, thank you so much, guys. New video soon.